I think we always knew that one day we will be together. Ilya compared us to Wandering Stars by Shalom Aleichem. He said, if you know the story, they were in love, then they separated, they moved to America, one of them, and then he followed. And then they reunited. So more or less it's the same story. Ilya was the last person who took me to the train. I moved to America, and then many years later we reunited, and still there. We work together, uh, we dream together, we travel together, and we're just simply together. The Kabakovs are one of the loudest, clearest, most inquisitive voices in what went on in Russia and in the Eastern Bloc. Ilya Kabakov and Emilia Kabakov are signal figures of how big cultures, dominant cultures, are never the whole story. Ilya was making work from the early 1960s onwards. Starting in the 1980s and into the 1990s, uh, he worked collaboratively with Emilia Kabakov. She was in the United States already. She was an accomplished pianist. And when he came to the United States, uh, he met her again, and uh, they began to work together, and now they work for many, many years together. Нам все время задают вопрос, как мы работаем вместе. И этот вопрос относится к тем вопросам, на которые мы не отвечаем. Это секрет. If you look at the work itself, all of the hand work, all of the painting, all of the drawing is Ilya. If you look at the conceptual work, it's very much shared. They discuss ideas, he puts things out, she discusses with him. It's an amplification of a conversation he's already having with himself. Это вопрос как повару, знаете, к повару. Допустим, человек ест курицу, ему страшно нравится. Он говорит, можно повара позвать? Повар приходит, скажите, как это вам, как вы жарите, какой размер сковородки у вас? Он говорит, вам нравится курица? Да, нравится. Ну и ешьте на здоровье. Everybody has a past, and everybody life based on your childhood and on the culture which was instilled in you when you were a child and when you grow up. And for us, in the beginning, it was limited to our Russian Soviet experience. And of course, a lot of materials was about suffering under this totalitarian regime. Ilya Kabakov was born in the Ukraine in 1933. Uh, the Ukraine was one of the republics of Russia that was the most devastated uh, during the Stalinist era. In 1933 was a crucial date because that was when Stalinism, with its full force, hit Soviet society. It hit Soviet society for Jews like Ilya. It was a key date in Germany as well, since 32 was the year that Hitler came to power and that the avant-garde of Germany disappeared gradually, whereas in Russia they didn't disappear gradually, they disappeared almost overnight. So Ilya was born at a turning point in history. Ilya had a kind of active imagination, and he didn't want to be in a situation where he was uh, under orders. He also knew the dangers of becoming visible in a society where being visible meant that you could be easily targeted. He was trying to figure out a way to think big, but act small. To do something that also, in form, didn't compete for or emulate in any way the official art of the state. And so instead of becoming a painter of portraits or of historical pictures, he became a book illustrator. And instead of illustrating books for adults about big things, he illustrated children's stories.
One of the ways of looking at Ilya's work is to think of him as being a writer who makes pictures and a picture maker who thinks in writerly terms. In Ilya's work, this means that literally there are voices in his pieces. So in the early days of his development, in his studio, he would uh, perform based on a series of albums that he made. Each of the albums is dedicated to an individual character, and each one of the characters has a salient characteristic. For example, Komarov, who flies, who, flies, uh, who levitates. Now, Komarov is many things. He is the free figure who is able to get off the earth at a time when just moving anywhere in Russia was terrible. And one can understand that the use of parable, the use of uh, storytelling is a way around censorship, is a way of talking about something without naming it. Often the art that is produced by people who live with deprivation and with uh, persecution isn't funny at all. But Ilya is very funny. And one of the weapons against depression is humor. <laughs> What does one make of paintings of Ilias, for example, where he appears in a kind of uh, Rembrandtesque self-portrait wearing an aviator's hat? Ilias' ambivalence towards traditional media and towards traditional ideologies of art, the genius artist, the master painter, and so on, is both a kind of uh, humorous dismissal and a tentative embrace. And that particular painting is wonderful because it shows you the young Ilya uh, trying to be the kind of painter that he should have wanted to be in the old Soviet system, but doing it with tug deeply buried in cheek. And it is also the artist genius painting himself as an astronaut. <laughs> Hail to the hero of the cosmos. It was an unforgettable day. At Vnukova Airport in Moscow, Communist Party and Soviet government leaders and thousands of Muscovites greet a true son of his country, Yuri Gagarin. There he is, the Soviet soldier who was the first man in history to take a trip into outer space. The cult of Yuri Gagarin, who was the first cosmonaut, uh, and of flight and modernity and technology in general in Russia, was huge. And a number of key installations by Ilya are related to this as well as paintings. What this man did was sat in his room and dreamed of the glory of a space flight. The viewer gets a glimpse into the mania it's like walking onto a television set or walking onto a movie set or stage set. You know you're not in reality, but it comes very, very close. When he came to the United States, the first thing he did was to take the graphic albums that he had made and turn them into full-scale installations. My installation is completely different. It completely incorporates and happens from the evolution of the art. Это то же самое, что сюжет Алисы в стране чудес. Она вошла в картину, и там она осталась. Это довольно сильное возвращение к картине, которую рисовали в традициях от Возрождения до реалистической картины. А именно, что это есть реальность за пределами рамы. Илья's idea of spectatorship is that the spectator is a protagonist, not a passive viewer and that the, uh, the, the spectator animates what they find. So as you walk into his installations, you almost are like walking into an Egyptian tomb. You're discovering as best you can what life went on there before you got there. But in discovering it, you become the participant observer. So you also affect the environment. The thing not to forget is that Kabakov's art is for all of its humor, for all of its critical qualities and so on, essentially a very melancholy art. There is always the sort of haunting sense. Everything is left over from a great dream which failed. At the same time, Ilya and Amelia's work is full of characters who strive for meaning, who strive for transcendence. So you see, for example, unabashedly in a way that one would not expect in most modern art, angels. 
one sees a character inventing a ladder to reach the heavens. And if the cosmonaut, uh, who, man who flew into space, is based on the cosmonauts, the cosmonauts were, after all, kind of Jacob's Ladder characters using technology to get up to the heavens, right? So there's a metaphysical longing built into his work, which is also connected to a, meta a metaphysical despair. And they're in constant uh, back and forth between the two. It's about human suffering, and it's all around you. It's all around the world. As a human beings, we're all the same. We have the same fears. We're afraid of unknown. Like a child, you're afraid of something coming at you from the corners so or different religion, different races. We work with these fears, we're trying to eliminate them, we're trying to understand them, and we try to make people to understand that it's nothing to be afraid, because communication through culture and art, you don't even need language. You just have to be tolerant and able to communicate.